it's overcast, not really too sunny, a lot of clouds. So, uh, I think that we'll do maybe, uh, maybe that barn in the background. Looks pretty nice, really cloudy day. Uh, you can see that um, it doesn't look or appear like we're gonna have a lot of sun today, but that's okay. So, we'll begin. I gotta set up and so on, and then we'll get going. Okay, here we are, we're starting. This is plain air. Uh, I've got my pallet here, I just threw it, threw it in here, and I'm all set. 11 by 14 inch canvas. We've got our image, and uh, we're gonna start. Need brushes, I would imagine. And I'll get a few of those out right now. Okay, of course it's uh, overcast day and it's starting to rain a little bit, but um, that won't affect this, I don't think. And uh, here we go. Um, I'm starting out with, uh, starting out with just a little bit of Naples yellow. Actually, uh, it's <laughs> it's very close to Naples yellow, uh, and um, what it is, I used a cadmium uh, yellow medium, and then added white, and then some burnt umber to it, and so on, and I got my own mixture. But it's so close to Naples yellow, that's what you can call it. Um, let's see. It's overcast. It doesn't look like it's really going to be any rain. Really. Um, this is really nice image, but uh, I'm not too sure where I should start out. Um, in nature, nature uses a lot of convex lines. A lot of convex lines. You hardly ever see a droopy... Um, concave line. Try to stay away from those when you're, you're doing uh, if you're going to make a concave line make it out of a numerous let's say you're gonna make it uh, a concave line and make it out of a series <laughs> of convex lines. Um, much more interesting. Much more interesting. I really trying to assess what's going on here now at the we got a barn I don't know how uh, how close I want to go into this but I see a, I actually see a house right over here and maybe I will incorporate that this tree is big but it's not as big as I'm going to make it and then we get into here diag uh, make a diagonal across the canvas and a right angle to it that hits this point that will be a goal to mean that's a really great place to put a building in so we'll put that uh, house in in that situate place and then um, right here we'll we'll put that um, let's move that house over to here and then the barn and the uh, silo will be right here um, we're kind of zeroing in on this now but um, I see a lot of, of blue greens out here they're in the towards the background I'm going to probably notice the convex lines always um, I think this will be probably the roof of that barn. I see another roof coming up here but that's almost obliterated and uh, okay so I see also a tree way over to the right that I really love. I'm gonna pull it into the canvas and that's a big one here and it's pretty pretty far in the background but we're gonna use it anyway because it's going to be helpful, I think. Got 
of tractors going by us. Uh, a lot of things, things going on. So Sunday, you'd think there wouldn't be much people doing much all here. And then I see some uh, brush and stuff here. You want to start your canvases about 50 feet into the background. So I'm going to get rid of this, maybe just have a darker area there. Um, I think what I'll do right now is to mix some colors up. So let's come on in here. I'm going to do some mixing. I am um, using the um, permanent green light here to get some greens going. Mix with the Naples yellow. Make some really nice greens, especially those that are not um, not very intense. but. I see that um, we do have some brown greens, some yellow brown greens here in the front. And so we'll use those. So I'm going to mix up a bunch of those. Now we're going to go over to this side, and mix up a little bit of Viridian. Um, some of, some of the uh, yellow mixed with the Viridian and so on get a different kind of green. I want to go a little bit more blue-green. We're going to tap into a little bit of ultramarine blue here. Go more bluer. I will take the uh, little bit, make it a little bit lighter. And I see back there some really dark uh, greens, but they're, um, they're, they're dark greens and they're um, blue-greens. So we're going to put something like that in there. There's actually some warm greens in there. I'm going to use that as a warm green. We're going to make up some more cool greens right here. And then I see, holy moly, I see a lot of greens there. <laughs> That's one thing that you got to watch out for. Is, um, and um, it's a really uh, kind of a simple value scheme. Um, let's, maybe I could uh, just pan up here a little bit, maybe back. Maybe we could put you over here a little bit more. Hopefully I won't get in the way. I, I have a tendency of doing that. There. Maybe that'll help. I'll pull you over here a little bit. That way you get rid of me and I can put a picture up towards the left of the um, building. All right, so we're gonna start. Um, I see some yellow greens behind the barn. And I see a kind of couple convex lines up there. So we're going to put them in. I see a little bit more e yellow green there. And here we go with some darker uh, greens right in here. Also notice this really dark dark green going in there. That's kind of nice to counteract that uh, building, push it out a little bit. And actually that's how it actually is, but just because it's actually that way doesn't mean you have to do it that way. Doesn't mean that you have to put it in there. You're the artist, right? So you want to do what your, your own thing. Um, this is pretty dark here. I could put some of these yellows in right here, but that's going to take Away, I want more of my more intense colors right in here. I'm going to continue to use this one. We might modify it by a little bit of um, yellow in this regard right here. I 
I'm using a little terps in here to get this going. I want to complete this within the hour I want to. So let's see what we can do. Um, that There's a blue, yellow, green over there. I'll try to do that. Uh, let's add a little bit more of blue on that. Need some more blue. Um, I see some um, some lighter greens right in here. Let's just put a couple in there for right now. Then we uh, we have a big stretch of grass here from the barn on down. I'm going to paint that. Um, we're going to mix up some greens here. I see that it's, um, they still tend to have some more um, more intensity up towards the nearer it gets to us. But that's actually pretty intense. But I'm going to try a less intense ground right at the moment. You can see that that's uh, pretty gray because I'm going to add into it and pull it back up. So let's pull this together here. It's not really a big canvas, so that's why I'm trying to I'm trying to rush myself just because um, sometimes you can get so fussy about stuff and uh, the main values you get the main values the main the main um, emphasis the main thrust the main meaning to the canvas or what you want to convey then you're actually done should not really add too much more and um, the thing when you do the open fields and that kind of stuff be sure you change your greens a lot sure you change your greens otherwise you know what this whole painting is pretty boring otherwise out there and I see okay I, I want to put in a couple more brilliant um, I'm gonna put in a little bit more um, up closer here a little bit more yellow um, yellow comes forward blues recede and uh, but there are some hints of um, there's some hints of some darker Um, I don't know. I think that's what that appears to be to be some reds in there. So we're going to throw some reds in there With All this green you have to have some of that complementary color coming through If you don't it's not a good idea. Also get that compliment throughout the whole painting um, It's probably a good idea to do that Here I'll put a I'll show you how you can just add a bunch of red and then work it in. Um, it's called wet and wet. A lot of people don't like to do that. They like to they like to futz around with it, and you're not getting um, what I like to do here. Let's pull some oranges in this. Yeah, not bad. Now I'm going to couple random notes of some yellows in here right up here okay I'm gonna step back should always take my step back from it to get a different perspective of it 
Um, as things weigh in the distance, they get lighter. So let's lighten up this over here. Let's lighten that up. Lighten it up. I'll put a little bit of red in there. Notice my uh, my brush. I it's kind of it's got a lot of it's got a lot of um, paint on it. We don't want to screw around on things. So um, let's put this tree in on the right and left here now. Um, that's some brown. That's some brown um, greens, <laughs> which which means it's a, it's a red greens or what am I saying? <laughs> that's a dichotomy. Only. It's, I mean, it's kind of weird, but it's a low, low intensity greens, right? And they tend to be more yellow. There, it seems to be a little bit more yellowish. So let's put that in. And so, but value-wise, it's much darker, much darker. Look at that. Look, I'm going to have to, I have to play it much darker. And sometimes you got to feel this out, but, and sometimes it's a good idea to have, I, I use this little implement I design. Um, and I look through it. I look through it at the, and I can see that I'm so much lower than what it appears to be right now because I've got so much white on it, on the canvas. I, it's so hard to determine how dark really that is. And my blacks are made from ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And you can have some other blacks that are really great too. Typically complementary colors. Um, for a, Viridian and all of their crimson makes a real neat. In fact, I might put some of those, that kind of dark in there too, just to help it out. Now I'm going to check with my checker. Now we're getting in the ballpark. Now we're getting in the ballpark. Let's see. See, I'm checking it out. Okay, that's nice, but too blue. I need to warm it up. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit. All right, so those darks I'm going to put in here. Uh, coming up with some more rain, some drizzle drops. There's a pine tree right here, right on the left side of this. Which may its pine trees tend to be more bluer, so I just go over that a little bit right here. We'll just put that house in in a little bit here. Um, like I say, I want to go up pretty high on this. Some darks in here, some darks, and then we've got this situation where it's the silo coming down here. We got a situation where it comes down, comes up, over, and then takes a kind of a funny. Alright, so All right, I gotta get some paper towel So it was a pretty good idea to to get those darks in there. I gotta put in this dark too. You can see that this dark needs to get pretty dark. Comes down at about that angle over this way. Some of those trees right here are nice and dark. 
the value is more important than the color. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. It's much more important than the color. Color does mean thing. It's nice once in a while to have some nice color in there. But the value is an important thing. And if you see anything in the, that that is really neat or you know, if it's too weird you don't want to put it in there. But if it's nifty, if it's something you wouldn't have thought of otherwise, hey, that's okay to put things in there that way. However, don't get too cute with stuff. Don't worry about your brush strokes, they'll take care of themselves. Okay, so that's nice. Um, let's get um, let's get something on that roof there. And it appears to be a red gray of sorts. So we'll put that in. It's much lighter than that, so. It's, it's better to hint at something than to be too blatant about something. Another thing. And the reason being is that um, that's, a, that's kind of what makes a painting a painting. And um, this silo is like a dark brick, undescribable color. <laughs> and um, we'll put something like that in here. And then it lightens as it comes around this way. So we'll light, allow it to lighten. It's an aluminum top. Some of that green is infiltrating my color there. Be a reflected color. We'll just leave that for right now. I'm gonna put in an almost white here. Yellow gray right there for that one building. There is a um, farmhouse over here. Kind of reddish. see it back there but it's not that prominent maybe I don't want to make it too too viable uh, yeah. maybe like that for right now okay doing right now you guys we got three minutes of this little episode here and then I got to uh, reset the camera I'm getting a drink because I'm talking so much okay here we go again we're going to okay now we want to get rid of some of this um, white here so let's put this in as a darkish red and 
Make sure that your perspective is right on these things. It's very important to get your perspective right. Get your perspective wrong and it looks like an amateur did it. No matter how great your brush, brush strokes, no matter how wonderful your value is. That's just some more of those. This is a, a lighter tree up there. The, um, the sky is kind of neat right now, so I'm going to pull that in. There's some color. I see some reds in there, which is good. I see this really neat cloud right here. I'll put that in really briefly. <clears throat> now, Clouds and everything typically will reflect some of the ground. ground uh, clouds are not white. They don't tend to be white. You might <laughs> want to differ with, with me on that, but um, some of the clouds, some of the clouds generally will reflect. the ground cover. And skies are not always blue. So watch out for that. Typically, clouds will have a bottom that's pretty much flat as opposed to the rest of the cloud. In this kind of day, you don't have any bright clouds, really. You do have some areas a little bit more intense. But they're not too too intense, and um, here's where you can cut in again. Into that and define that tree. So how are we doing? We got two minutes left on this shot. Here I am, I'm nearing in on like 45 minutes or something like that. I'm not sorry about that. But it's gonna take me a little bit longer. Okay, I'm bringing you in closer now. Uh, you know how the how it looks. What I about right now is I don't really care what that scene looks like now because I'm off on my own painting. This is my own my own entity here, my own creation so I can do what I want from now on. I will stick to generally you know what's before me but I don't have to I am not commanded or ruled by it. Typically to define green areas, to define anything, the one thing that's the most important in definition and describing anything 
are its edges. I can just scrub a whole tree right by doing that in the background just because I've done that edge. I've added to more trees just because of that edge. Adding some more definition here now. I want to go just a little bit darker right there. Because one tree is behind in front of the other. I want to I think I'm going to blue that up a little bit back here too. So are in crimson and reds anything else so we'll put some of that back in a little bit <laughs> 